Three minutes to go. English instead. Are you sure? Yeah. No one ever gets to read the English, so. It's true. Oh, I picked the top one. Okay. I, I wrote it down. All right. Now, is Bobby down? It's here. I don't see Bobby. So, I need to find out who's reading if someone's lighting a candle. Shalom. Your kids want to come up and sing with me.
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You know, I've almost forgotten what it's like to have a talus with a suit coat as opposed to the, um, the robe. Um, but we are blessed to be here. I had a um, wonderful conversation with a friend of mine um, in New Jersey who used to be at a church here and who was in Lexington, grew up in Lexington where I was. So we're like destined to do things together because of all the spaces we've been. And he was telling me uh, this afternoon just how incredibly blessed he feels going to seminary, being with people from all over the world. And, and this was really the great part for me, he said, and the first thing that I told my professors was that I was told by my rabbi, he says, as he's going to Drew you know, uh, Theologic Seminary, he says, I was told by my rabbi that we have to remember that we are now serving all of God, not just a piece of God. And when you hear that from someone, you know, that just, that, that was a great thing. So that said, um, welcome to everybody. We are past the first part of the holidays. We still have Sukkot um, to go through. And if, if I could summarize Sukkot best uh, as we'll embark on it, uh, celebrating it over the next uh, couple weeks, it's our time to be able to make sure that we're doing everything right uh, as best we can. I once had a rabbi tell me, this is like when Santa Claus is checking the list of who's naughty and nice, because the Messianic age is supposed to vest during Sukkot. Um, this is the time when we welcome our ushpizin, our, our ancestors and our friends and neighbors into the sukkah, that we have to remember that we're all supposed to be on our best behavior, not because someone's watching, but because we're supposed to be. And that's because we know it's right. Um, so I'm hoping that this year um, to come, we do the work that um, if we're not already ready for that day, that um, we can impact the world such that next year at this time, as we dwell in our Sukkot, we'll, we'll have um, the age of peace dwelling there with us. That said, we're going to begin this evening. I believe we are um, going to begin with L'Chad Dodi. We're on page 138. 138 as we um, will um, welcome the Sabbath bride. So we're going to light our Shabbat candles, and I'm hoping the new year brings us into better fortune doing that. So Bobby, if you will, we're on page 120. 
O oh, source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words that we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter this sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. Amen. Amen. The heaven and the earth were finished, and all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing, and God ceased on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it, God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu V'mitzvotov V'ratza V'hanu V'shabat Kutsho Be'ahava U'vratzon Kin Filanu Zikaron L'maase V'reheishit Ki hu yom tehila li mikrai e kodesh zeker litziat mitzrayim ki vanu vacharta veutanu kidashta mikohamim veshavat kosha be'ahava uvratzon. Hinchaltanu, barokat Adonai, meka adesh hashabat. Amen. Thank you. You have the magic touch because you got the candles on the first time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to continue um, as we begin our worship on page 146. I'm going to ask that everyone uh, rise for Baruch Hu, if you can. Baruch Hu et Adonai hamivorach Baruch Adonai hamivorach Le'olam Page 150, At the bottom, please read with me. Everlasting love, you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel. Baruch atah Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Continue with the Shema in 152. Shema Yisrael Adonai. Please 
Please be seated. Let's read together on 155. Love your God with every heartbeat, with every breath, with every conscious act. Keep in mind the words I command you today. Teach them to your children. Talk about them at work, whether you are tired or you are rested. Let them guide the work of your hands. Keep them in the forefront of your vision. Do not leave them at the doorway of your house or outside your gate. They are reminders to do all of my mitzvot so that you can be holy for God. I am Adonai, your God. I led you out of Egypt to become your God. I am Adonai, your God. We continue on page 157. The top of the page. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there's a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there's no way to get there from, he from here to there, except by joining hands and marching together. Page 158. <laughs> Sixty, Hashki Venu Adonai Eloheinu Shalom, Vami Denu Shomreinu Lechaim, Ufros Alenu Sukat Shlomecha, Vitaknenu Beetza Tova Milfanecha, Vahoshienu Lamaan Shemecha. Grant, O God, that we lie down in peace and raise us up our guardian to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace, guide us with your good counsel, for your name's sake be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and to peace evermore. Praised are you, Adonai, guardian of Israel, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all people of faith and over Jerusalem. Baruch atah Adonai. Hapore sukat shalom alenu ve al kola mo Yisrael ve al Yerushalayim. We'll turn the page and we celebrate this day of Shabbat. Bishamru. <laughs> Bishamru v'nehe Yisrael et ha-shabbat Le'asot et ha-shabbat Le'dorotam barit olam Bishamru v'nehe Yisrael et ha-shabbat Le'asot et ha-shabbat Le'dorotam barit olam Shabbat, 
Adonai et Hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz v'shamru v'nei Yisrael et ha'shabat la'asot et ha'shabat le'dorot ha'mbarit olam u'vayom ha'shvi shavat v'yinafash shavat v'yinafash Shavat vayna fahash v'shamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-shabat le'asot et ha-shabat le'dor tamberit olam. So we continue with the Amidah, page 164, and as we're going to rise, the question I'm going to ask is, we say, God, open our lips that my mouth will declare glory or praise. How, how do we make that happen? So think about that as we're going through the service. How is it that you know, we're going to say these words, sing these words, and then we're going to go about our daily life, but how do we make these words actually impact how we behave having said them when we go out there? So with that, please rise. <laughs> Adonai sefil taitiv tav ufi agita hilatecha Eternal God, open my lips that my mouth may declare your glory Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe avateinu ve'omateinu Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leha, Ha El Hagador, Hagibur, Vehanora, El Elyon, Gom El Hazadim Tovim, Vekane Yaakov, Vezoher Hazde Avot, Vayimahot. Who may be good law, leave me, they may have, lay a umashia, um again, Baroka ta Adonai, may gain of Raham, there's Rat Sarah. We continue on 169. We pray that we might know before whom we stand, the power whose gift is life who quickens those who have forgotten how to live. We pray for the winds to disperse the choking air of sadness, for cleansing rains to make parched hopes flower, and to give all of us the strength to rise up toward the sun. We pray for love to encompass us, for no other reason save that we are human, for love through which we may all blossom into persons who have gained power over our own lives. We pray to stand upright, we fall in, to be healed, we sufferers. We pray to break the bonds that keep us from the world of beauty. We pray for opened eyes, we who are blind to our own authentic selves. We pray that we may walk in the garden of a purposeful life, our own powers in touch with the power of the world. Praise be the God whose gift is life, whose cleansing reigns let parched men and women flower toward the sun. Please be seated. Page 173. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day, and may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Page 177. God of goodness, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, for the richness of the earth, which day by day sustains us. For all of these and more, we offer thanks. Baruch atah Adonai, 
Hatoshimcha Ucha Nael Lahadot. So let's pray for peace, 178. Shalom Raha, Val Yisrael Amacha, Tasihim Leolam. Shalom Raha, Val Yisrael Amacha, Tasihim Leolam. Kiyotam. Absolutely love that. Um, we'll have that. We'll do that. Um, take take a few moments. Um, think about the joys we spent Yom Kippur reading all about the stuff that we need to fix in this world, and I kept admonishing us to think about the things that we need to celebrate. So for this moment of prayer, um, concentrate on the incredible blessings that we too often don't pay attention to and ought to be more appreciative of.
Pirkei Avot uh, teaches us that our, the honor of our students should be as dear as that of our teachers because truly they are our teachers. So I guess we're clapping for us, say shalom from now on. It, <laughs> we got approval from up there. Uh, <laughs> I told Conrad that um, at some event, I was going to say something as God is my witness, and I was going to give him a microphone to speak from up there from on high and answer. I bear witness. <laughs> you know, um, Maimonides um, and so many others have taught us that, that laughter really is the greatest of medicines. Um, and. Um, there's the old adage that it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. And I think that's important because oftentimes when we think about folks who are ill, our heart immediately sinks as we want to be in solidarity with them in their pain um, when they need our joy and our, and our uplift. Um, and so I think it, uh, it was quite appropriate that as we're about to remember folks who are really struggling, that we remember that our obligation is to bring joy into their world. And, uh, and I think that's a great statement for healing. So for all those lives completely disrupted and destroyed within, with, because of our weather, those suffering from the wars uh, and inhumanity, for all who are tired taking care of loved ones, for all those who are ill, injured, um, otherwise unable to fulfill life as they would like to lead it. Closer to home, members of this community, Dorothy Parent, uh, Honey Kibler, Lillian Goldberg, Karen Nero, and Ben Groff, and all who are who you are holding dear, and if you'd like to share names, please feel free to do so. Baruch Atzaronai Rofei HaCholim. God, make us instruments of healing, helping us to bring restoration and joy into all lives who are in need. We continue with Mishaberach, our Mishaberach prayer for healing on 371. <coughs> So a child came home from religious school and mom said, what did you learn today? Well, mom, Moses led this huge battalion of tanks into Egypt. He blew up the Egyptians and he led the people into the desert. And when he got to the sea, they built this great pontoon bridge so that all the tanks could cross it. And as Moses got about halfway across and looked back and, and Pharaoh was, was following, he made sure that the helicopters and the rocket and the jets were sending rockets down onto Pharaoh's troops so that they couldn't catch up. Mom says, 
that's what they taught you in Sunday school? Well, not quite, Mom. But if, they, if I told you what they really told me, you'd never believe it. <laughs> yeah, the Jewish value of education, um, the Jewish values of, of figuring out why this stuff matters. So the text for this week, the Shabbat um, portion from Ha'azinu, Moses um, told us last week that he had his final song to share. And does anybody remember whether Moses was in a good mood or bad mood? Bad, yeah, Moses is not a happy camper right now, okay? And, but it starts off, off it, well enough. It says, listen you heavens and I will speak. Hear you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like the rain and my words descend like the dew, like showers on the new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of God and praise the greatness of our God. We're great up to that point. And what happens to the rest of the song is you are stiff-necked and you are horrible and you are rotten people and you are going to turn from God and footnote, God will take you back. That's a great statement if you want to think about it in terms of, you know, the, the metaphor of we act badly and we're still okay. You know, the idea that there are no bad people, there are people who act badly, and so we get the benefit of the, the doubt, and, and that's what Teshuvah is all about. Um, but there's a piece here that requires us to talk about what it is that we believe in, who we might believe in, and what that, why that matters. So, show of hands, who believes in God? Don't be embarrassed not to put your hand up, okay? All right? Because a lot of people buy into the old man on the mountain type thing, or the forces of nature, you know, and people say, I'm an atheist, and I don't know what an atheist is, because if you have faith, you're not an atheist. And people, well, I don't have any faith. And I said, well, do you, do you love somebody? Well, yeah. Okay, then you have faith, because there's no way you can quantify that love. You can't say, I love you seven or nine, or, you know, I love you this much. And even though we throw out words, you know, I love, I love this hamburger. I'd hate to think that you love the hamburger as well as you do your wife, you know? You know, radically different concept. Um, but we, we are people who are faithful, but who deny it because it hasn't met someone else's definition of what it means to be faithful. So the number of people who tell me, oh, I'm not religious. Here's a secret. I'm not religious. Okay, I don't think that dotting I's and crossing T's is the pathway to a life of faith with God. I think ritual is supposed to enhance our path. I think ritual is supposed to be there to help us on our path to faith. But the goal of being Jewish is not to light Shabbat candles. The reason to light Shabbat candles is to help us remember the separation of the week from the holiness of Shabbat. And the same could be said for any of our Jewish rituals. There's, there's a very pragmatic reason that we do what we do. And I don't care what the ritual is, there's a reason for it. The number of people who say kashrut, kosher, well, you know, they couldn't keep pigs clean, you know, the, the meat in the wilderness. And I say, well, so how did they do it for cows? You know, it... it it's not, and nowhere in the Torah, by the way, does it say anything about cleanliness for, of the meat, the health of the meat, or trichinosis, or any of that stuff. Simply, God says, don't do it because you don't want to be like those people, the pagans, who eat pork. Okay? And it's not so much the pork that's the issue because there's a debate, and I shared it with you a month or so ago, that there's now a strain of pig found in Indonesia that chews its cud. It has a clove and a hoof, and it chews its cud. So does that make that strain of pig kosher? I don't know. So the, it's not about the nuts and the bolts. We do the things that we do out of discipline. So for kashrut even, even in the most from, the most traditionally, ritually um, you know, observant homes, they're supposed to say, not I can't eat pork. I choose not to eat pork. I choose not to work on Shabbat. 
Okay, so it, it's, it's about the discipline of knowing that nobody can make these decisions for you except you. And so we have Reformed Jews who keep strictly kosher. We have Reformed Jews who are Shomer Shabbat. That doesn't make them Orthodox. It means that they made choices, and they do so within the framework of a Reformed Jewish uh, theology. So when we, have to, when we talk about if, if God's not sitting there in judgment and, and checking the, the box, you did this today and you did that today, what does God do? So Daisy Machado, one of my heroes, Daisy is a, um, a professor at the Union Theologic Seminary. And for a short period of time, she was the president of the Lexington Theologic Seminary until the white male power base decided they didn't want a black woman to be president. Um, but at her inaugural address, when she was being inaugurated as president of the, of the seminary, she said the most prophetic thing. Seminaries have to stop teaching that God exists. They have to start teaching what God does. Okay, because if God exists, but God doesn't do anything, or if God exists and we have no idea what God does, then God's existence doesn't really matter. Because how does God work in this world? And this is where Moses' admonition, listen earth and listen heavens, comes into play. Are we paying attention? So how does God work in this world? You say prayers, and how do they get answered? And what do we expect? And are we disappointed if it doesn't come out the way for which we prayed? I'll prejudice the conversation by saying that um, one of the great sages of country music, okay, um, actually many of the great sages of country music have, have offered us things like, um, I thank God for unanswered prayers. You know, no is an appropriate answer sometimes. In fact, our tradition teaches that when you ask for something, you're supposed to always say, I want this if it's for the best. And that if it's for the best is always a key piece of any prayer. So I want this to happen if it's for the best. And then how does it happen? Well, I tell my bar and bat mitzvah students, when we sit in my office and I'll say, so you hear someone out in the parking lot saying, you know, God, I'm starving to death, and, and I, I'm going to die right here if I don't eat. And I say to my student, you have three choices. Choice number one is ignore it. Choice number two is to say, hey, Rabbi, let's go look at the window while the guy starves to death. Or choice three is you run out of my office into the kitchen, and you grab whatever you can find, and you run out to the parking lot, and you give it to that person and save his life. I have been blessed that not one student has ever chosen number two or number one. Okay. And my, aunt, my question is, why? what makes you do that? You don't know who that is. But it's the right thing to do. Well, how do you know it's the right thing to do? And that's where faith comes in. There's something that hits us. The cold de mama, the still small voice of which Eliza speaks. Uh, you know, that, that voice that touches us that says, get up and do something. Listen, pay attention. And so when we talk about how God works in this world, the answer is us. Because you know what? God can't feed someone we won't feed. God, God cannot house someone that we won't house. God cannot grant, grant dignity to someone who we won't dignify. And so I go back to this whole issue of Moses being angry and the rabbis who try to rehabilitate Moses in the moment, and, and I'm going to grant them this one, is that He's angry because people have forgotten miracles in their life. You know, in the morning liturgy, we have four pages in our prayer book, uh, Nisim B'chal Yom, daily miracles. They're not the things that interrupt life. They are life. The fact that your heart beats is a miracle, unexplainable. The fact that this lump of flesh inside your head can store information and discern between pieces of information, that's a miracle. The fact that we're there to take care of each other, that we care, it's a miracle. David Ben-Gurion said, in order to be a realist in this world, you have to believe in miracles. Because but for those miracles, none of us would care about each other. None of us would care at all. 
And then Nachman of Bratislav takes it one step further. And he said that a man should believe in God through faith and not through miracles. Why? Quite simply because if we, if we accept that they happen and we take them, or we give them without understanding that there's a purpose behind it, that there's some connection that we form, then it is a bracha levatala, a prayer without value. So we have to go beyond just, okay, that was a nice miracle. We have to know that we're empowered and obligated to share them with each other. And when we get, the, when we're on the receiving end of a miracle, we ought to be thankful. That's why we get up in the morning. The first words we're supposed to say, Modei ani lefanecha. Wow, how cool, God, I woke up this morning. Okay? How many of us just take for granted? Or, oh my God, I got up this morning. It's too early, you know? I'm thirsty, or I got into the bathroom, you know, whatever it is. And, we, and those are our first thoughts before we acknowledge just the miracle that we got up. And when we go to sleep, Ma'arivarvim, a prayer that we, we, we say often at night, is this, the stars are ordered in the sky and the seasons are going to alternate. God, there's order to life, and I'm hoping that part of that order and that system is that I'll rest tonight and I'll wake up tomorrow morning. But we go to sleep and we're more worried about the calendar that we have tomorrow than of the blessing of rest that we're going to hopefully get that night. So Nachman of Bratislav tells us that there are miracles all over the place, but don't rely on them. Don't wait for them to happen. Invest yourselves in making them happen for you and for the people around you. Because if we don't do that, then there is nothing left. So what does God do? I don't know. I do know that when we reach beyond ourselves, there's a power and there's an energy to make things happen that we don't have hold of until we reach beyond ourselves. And for me, that's where God lives. So I pray that each of us looks past ourselves, looks past our immediate circle, and finds ways to appreciate the ways in which we rely on the world and it relies on us, and to make that exchange a bigger part of every breath that we take. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue on page 586 with Alenu. I'm going to ask that we rise. Please. When cherished ties are broken and the chain of love is shattered, only trust and the strength of faith can lighten the heaviness of a heart. At times the pain of separation seems more than we can bear. But if we dwell too long on our loss, we embitter our hearts and harm ourselves and those about us. The psalmist said that in his affliction he learned of the law of God, and in truth, grief is the greatest teacher when it sends us back to serve and bless the living. We learn how to counsel and comfort those who, like ourselves, are bowed with sorrow. 
We learn when to keep and silent in their presence and when a word will assure them of our love and our concern. Thus, even when they are gone, the departed are with us, moving us to live as in their highest moments they themselves wish to live. We remember them now. They live in our hearts, and they are an abided blessing. We recall the yard sites this week. Rosie Adler, Samuel Arch, Ray Blank, Julius Brisky, Otto J. Buxbaum, A. Joseph Cole, Simon Dillham, Eric Feldheim, Robert Green, Joseph W. Gross, Louis Katz, Dennis McNulty, Rabbi Charles Mintz, Moses Moss, Sigmund I. Moss, Solomon R. Moss, Carrie Ellen O'Brien Helmut, Judith Repsius, Bertha, Rich Bertha Richmond, Alan C. Rogal, Saari S. Rogal, Robert Allen Rogoff, Lillian Rosenberg, Harry Sartig, Miriam M. Serta, Gail Shapiro, Jack Scheinwald, Stephen Spitalny, Stephen Ten Eich Riech, Ian Michael Wolf, and Bernard Wolf. Are there other annual yard sites being observed? We're Shloshim for Phyllis Berman and for Lois Lehrman Grass and beginning our Shiva process in love for Fritz Gottfeld. May the memories that they leave to us always lead us to blessing. Kaddish is on page 598. Yitkadal, <laughs> Vecha yechon of Yomechon, Ufraye de Hol Beit Israel, Bagala of Isman Kariv de Mru, Amen. Yehesh me Rabba Mevorach le Olam Lame Almaya, Yit Barach Vaish de Bach, Vit Paar Vit Roman Vit Nase, Vit Adar Vit Ale Vit Alal, Shemeda Kudsha, Brihu, Leila min Kol Birchata Vishirata, Tush Birchata Venechamata, Da Amiran be Alma, vi Imru, Amen. Yehe Shlomo Rabba min Shemaya, Vichaim Alenu ve Alko Yisrael, vi Imru, Amen. O se Shalom bi Romav, Hu ya a se Shalom, Alenu ve Alko Yisrael, vi Imru, Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved, we say together. Please be seated. We are doing something a little out of order um, tonight. Um, we're going to first close with Maya Hayom, and then um, Conrad and I have an announcement that we need to make. So Conrad, I'm going to ask after Maya Hayom if you'll come and join us out on the bima, please. Okay. You're on. Great. <laughs> Ya fe hayom shabbat shalom ma ya fe hayom shabbat shalom shabbat shabbat shalom shabbat shabbat shalom shabbat shabbat shalom shabbat shabbat shalom Dan, are you doing announcements? 
Conrad. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you. So nice to see all of you again. Yeah, and hello. Um, this weekend, uh, Sunday and, and then Monday, uh, the Lehrman Chapel, you can come, it's sort of like a meet and greet with the rabbi, and we're calling it Creating Relationships and Conversation with Rabbi Mark Klein. Um, so you'll see him on your thing, but most importantly, make sure you do RSVP uh, to Shelly over there, and her uh, email's on the, uh, thing, on the uh, flyer. Additionally, beyond those we're also still inviting folks to have rabbi mark over with friends so like if you want to have him come to your house he does house calls we're still i bring chicken that. soup if i need to yeah and you can just introduce him to a couple members of the congregation that you haven't that he thinks he hasn't met yet we're, we would love to do that um uh sisterhood uh there was a religious school uh on sunday the excuse me sunday the 16th 9 30 to noon a board meeting and then pizza in the hut, which you've been hearing quite a bit about. There's one of those on Friday and one of those on Sunday. You can see on your uh, program here. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you guys for our being Shabbat Shalom. Also, there is um, next week, because it's consecration, there is a potluck and there's a sign up for that. We ask everyone that wants to join in that to celebrate. So the teenagers are going to have pizza before services and the rest of us get to have real food afterwards. Okay? So. <clears throat> Do you know what this is? I do. <laughs> okay, everybody. It's his birthday. Yes. Okay, wait. Yom who let it sameach. Yom who let it sameach. Yom who let it sameach. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Conrad. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Well, that's why I put you know, foil in it. Um, so, how about a mozi? Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam. Hamotzi lechem and haaretz. Amen. So may God bless us and keep us. May God's light shine for us as we know God's grace. May we create friends and lasting relationships with each other and with ourselves. And we will bring peace to this world. And may we make sure that before you leave here, we greet folks around the room. Okay? because you all decided to sit in all disparate places back there, you know. You're not getting out of here without greeting somebody, okay? Are and you Conrad, ready? Amen. Conrad has to pass out the challah. Okay. Conrad no. has to pass out the challah. Oh, hold on, he's got to pass out the challah. <laughs> I just get first. Shabbat shalom, everybody.